In order to keep watch over his little sister, a security guard takes a job as a guard at an abandoned pizzeria, but soon discovers that it is haunted by scary animatronics. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Five Nights at Freddy's, from 2023. In a surveillance room, a desperate guard tries to unscrew the ventilation tunnel grill. He becomes even more nervous when he notices that the door to the room, which is reinforced with several tables and chairs, is being pushed open by someone. With a lot of effort, he manages to get the grating off and runs down the tunnel, with only a flashlight to help him. When he reaches the other side, he comes across a warehouse and a door with a sign saying exit. However, when he opens it, he decides to take one of the paths without realizing that on the wall next to him, a light casts a macabre shadow. The guard runs and the lights behind him mysteriously go out. To make matters worse, he reaches an exit, but can't open the door. Just then, he hears a voice and heavy footsteps. The guard screams in panic as he sees something approaching and is knocked out. When he wakes up, he finds himself strapped into a chair while a strange device is turned on. The device is shaped like a mask, but inside it are sharp razors spinning in circles. The mask is then slowly moved towards the guard's face, who tries to remove the screw from the chair's arm in an attempt to free himself. He almost makes it, but the mask gets closer and closer to his face. His screams of terror echo around the outside of the pizzeria, but there is no one to help him. The next morning, a man wakes up to the sound of the alarm clock. His name is Mike and he's getting ready to go to work, but first he has to tidy up his little sister, Abby. The girl doesn't like her brother very much and throws a teddy bear in his face to provoke him. Afterwards, Mike shows up at a shopping mall where he works as a security guard. While ordering an ice cream, he spots a young man who seems to be lost, but then a man pulls him by the arm against his will. Thinking he was a criminal, Mike sets off in his direction and manages to stop him at a fountain, after which he starts throwing punches at the supposed criminal. The problem is that he was actually the young man's father. Mike is then fired and has to find another job. He then goes to an agency and talks to Steve, a counselor who tells him about a job vacancy as a security guard. However, he realizes that the pay is not great and that the work would be at night. So Mike doesn't accept the offer and returns home, where he finds a document taped to the door informing him that he has been prosecuted for the assault at the mall. As he enters, Mike says goodbye to Max, Abby's nanny, and tries to convince his sister to have dinner, but she doesn't want to hear about it and goes to her room. At bedtime, Mike takes his medicine and lies down, while he sees a poster of the state of Nebraska stuck to the ceiling. Seeing this image gives him a memory of camping with his parents and his younger brother, Garrett. While they were eating, his mother spilled some soda on the table and went to get a cloth, but asked Mike to watch the youngest. However, the young man ends up getting distracted and, when he hears the noise of a car, realizes that his brother has been taken. He runs, but can't catch up with the vehicle. Suddenly, Mike wakes up, realizing he's reliving his nightmare. The next morning, the young man goes to Abby's nursery to meet her aunt and her sister's therapist, as they need to discuss custody of the girl. Her aunt says that Abby should stay with her because Mike can't take care of his sister. However, he knows that his aunt's only interest is the alimony for custody of the girl and decides to persist in staying by the girl's side. The first step is to get a new job. Without much choice, he decides to accept a job as a night watchman at a pizzeria called Freddy Fazbear. The place was very successful in the 1980s, but has been closed ever since. However, its owner doesn't want to get rid of it and hires people to keep an eye on the pizzeria on a regular basis. Once there, Mike walks to the security room, turns the power back on and finds a TV, a VCR and a tape with his name on it. He plays the tape and realizes that it is a recording, introducing the pizzeria to the new security guard. In the video, he discovers that the owner of the place was obsessed with animatronic technology and created them in the shape of animals to entertain the children. After the recording ends, Mike grabs his uniform from the closet and decides to explore the place. When he arrives in the main room, he finds the animatronic robots behind some curtains, which are somewhat bizarre in appearance, but still seem harmless. When he returns to the security room, Mike falls asleep and has the same dream as before, but this time, a group of children appear behind him in the middle of the forest. He then asks what they are doing there, but they all run away. Mike tries to chase one of them and ends up tripping over a rock, which causes him to wake up the next morning. When the young man gets home, Max leaves after another day. Moments later, she appears with her brother, Jeff, at a restaurant table, in the company of Mike's aunt and his lawyer. It is then revealed that Max was hired by the woman to try and find something suspicious in the house, so that the aunt could use this information in court and get custody of Abby. However, Max returns empty-handed. Her brother suggests that they break into the place where Mike is working and destroy everything, as this would get him fired, 
making it easier to transfer custody of Abby to her aunt. Meanwhile, Mike is getting ready for work, but first he tries to take down the photo of Nebraska on his bedroom ceiling. Just then, Abby appears wearing his security uniform and insists on going with her brother. The two argue and Mike gets the better of her, taking the uniform and leaving Abby in the care of the nanny. At work, Mike puts the Nebraska poster up on the living room wall and once again ends up falling asleep. However, a huge shadow in the shape of an animal appears on the security camera screen. While dreaming, Mike asks the children if they know who took his brother. They run again, but this time Mike manages to catch one of them. However, the young man had an iron hook in his hand, which he used to cut Mike. Frightened, the young man looks at the child, who screams loudly as black goo comes out of his eyes, waking Mike up from his nightmare. When he wakes up, he realizes that the power is out and switches off the circuit breaker, without noticing that an animatronic is standing on the other side of the door. Mike turns the power back on and everything seems to be back to normal, until he hears the sound of a doorbell ringing. Looking at the security cameras, the man realizes that there is a car outside and a hooded policewoman standing in front of the door. He goes there and the policewoman introduces herself as Vanessa. Before the conversation can continue, she notices blood coming from Mike's hand and claims to know where the first aid kit is in the pizzeria. Mike is confused and, when he looks at the wound, he realizes that it is identical to the one caused by the young man with the hook during his dream. Vanessa helps him make a bandage and he asks her how she knows so much about the place. She replies that the pizzeria is part of her surveillance area and that she used to love going there when she was a child. The conversation continues and the two go into the main room. Vanessa turns on the power and activates the animatronics, which begin a musical performance. One of them, shaped like a fox, appears with a sharp hook for a hand, similar to that of the young man in Mike's nightmare. Vanessa also reveals that, in the 1980s, several children went missing in this pizzeria, which led to the place being closed down ever since. However, she soon changes the subject, walks over to the counter to pick up a toy badge and hands it to Mike, saying that his job as a security guard is now official. With the shift over, Vanessa leaves and Mike locks the doors, without realizing that, nearby, Jeff, Max's brother, and two more henchmen, are waiting for him to leave to start the invasion. The gang manages to get in and starts destroying everything, unaware that the security system has somehow activated itself, just like the animatronics. One of the crooks is in the kitchen and is startled when the freezer door begins to shake. He opens one of the doors and finds nothing, but when he opens the other, he sees an animatronic in the shape of a cake. Again, he is startled by another noise and gets distracted, but when he looks in the freezer again, he realizes that the cake has disappeared. Trying to recover from his fright, the bandit closes the freezer and turns around to find a bird-shaped animatronic in front of him, holding the same cake from the freezer, which jumps towards him. In another part of the pizzeria, the second henchman is breaking everything until he hears his partner's screams. When he gets there, he finds his friend having his face eaten off, while the animatronic looks at him in a frightening way. Just then, Jeff arrives at the security room where Mike works and prepares to smash it up with a crowbar. However, through the security cameras, he sees his partner running desperately and hiding in a room. To his misfortune, the door locks on its own and he comes across another animatronic that was hiding there waiting for him. Jeff rushes to the scene to help his friend, but it's too late. When he reaches the corridor, the door to the room opens and the robot that eliminated his companion comes out of it. At that moment, Jeff panics and runs back to the security room. There, he tries to use the phone, but it doesn't work. He then looks through the security screens and sees the two animatronics who eliminated his friends staring at the camera. One of them places the cake inside the ventilation tunnel, which leads to the monitoring room. The cake tries to get through the tunnel grating to attack Jeff, but the young man manages to resist. The door to the room then opens and he tries to escape, but the doors are locked again and Jeff finds himself in a corridor without exit. To make matters worse, Foxy, the hook animatronic, appears and starts singing a bizarre song just before attacking Jeff. Meanwhile, Max arrives on the scene and, worried about her brother, goes into the pizzeria to look for him. She comes across a young man running and calls her to come with him. At that moment, the young woman decides to follow him and arrives in a room where she finds the animatronic Freddy. Inside, a child's voice invites her to come closer. The woman then grabs a chair to look inside the robot's mouth, only to be grabbed by a human hand, which pulls her inside. At the sibling's house, Mike tries to get close to Abby and gives her the badge he received from the policewoman, but his sister doesn't care. Annoyed, Mike keeps the badge and says he's doing his best to look after Abby. Repentant, the girl goes to get her brother's present, but the drawer is jammed and Abby knocks everything over, finding the order transferring her guardianship to her aunt in the mess. 
The girl tries to understand what's going on, but before the siblings can start an argument, Vanessa appears at the door saying that someone has broken into the pizzeria. She also says that she has found some sleeping pills and Mike admits that they are his. Vanessa then tells him that if the pizzeria was broken into because of Mike's carelessness, he could face criminal charges. The young man then calls her to talk and reveals that every night, he takes medication so that he can sleep and dream about the day his brother was captured. His goal is to find out who did it, as he believes that the identity of the criminal is stored somewhere in his mind. Moved by the story, Vanessa decides not to report what happened and throws Mike's medication into the lake, telling him to do his job properly from now on. When his shift finally arrives, Mike calls the babysitter, unaware of her tragic fate. With nowhere to leave his sister, he decides to take her to work. Abby falls asleep and Mike decides to clean up the mess the bandits have made. When he's finished, he ignores Vanessa's advice and goes back to sleep. Just then, Abby wakes up and is called by a mysterious voice. She decides to explore the place and finds one of the animatronics hidden behind the curtains. Meanwhile, Mike is dreaming and once again encounters one of the mysterious children, so he takes the opportunity to ask for his help. The young man agrees, but asks what he'll get in return and Mike says he'll give him anything. Just then, the security guard wakes up to his sister's screams and runs into the main room. There, he finds all the animatronics gathered and thinks that Abby is being attacked. He grabs a chair and Freddy tries to attack him, but the girl appears and tells them that Mike is her brother. The animatronic gives up attacking Mike and Abby reveals the names of each of them. Mike can't believe what's happening, but he has no choice but to ask Abby to accompany him. The young woman then says goodbye to her bizarre new friends. When they get home, Mike puts Abby to bed and sees some of her drawings on the side table, realizing that they are the animatronics from the pizzeria. However, the drawing that intrigues him the most is the one showing his brother in his nightmare. The next morning, Mike talks to Abby to understand what happened last night and she reveals that the animatronics are controlled by the ghosts of children who disappeared in the 80s. When evening comes, the two go to the pizzeria again and there they meet Vanessa, who confesses to knowing about the story of the possessed animatronics. Meanwhile, Abby and the robots decide to play around, building a fort using the tables and chairs in the place. Vanessa joins in, suggesting that they put a roof on the fort and goes to the storeroom to get some sheets. Mike accompanies her and tries to understand how the policewoman knows so much about the place. Instead of answering, she asks why Mike brought Abby with him, and the man replies that he wants to find out what happened to his brother, and that's all he cares about. Meanwhile, Abby is having fun with the animatronics, but in a moment of carelessness, she touches the guitar of one of them and is electrocuted. Despite the scare, the girl survives without any major injuries. Vanessa is angry that Mike has put Abby in danger and says that if he takes the girl to the pizzeria one more time, she will arrest him. Minutes later, Mike returns home and calls his aunt, determined to give her custody of Abby. When the girl wakes up, she sees her brother and aunt together for breakfast and understands what's going on. Abby is furious and locks herself in her room, crossing out her brother's face from her drawings. Mike then asks his aunt to look after the girl while he's away. After that, he goes to a pharmacy to buy more sleeping pills and heads to the pizzeria. Once there, he takes his medicine, puts on his headphones and falls asleep. As before, Mike returns to the same nightmare, but something is different. His parents show up at the campsite and his brother, Garrett, is with them. Mike doesn't understand what's going on, but the children from the dream appear, saying they can give him what he's always wanted, his brother alive. However, in exchange for this favor, they want Abby. In an impulsive act, Mike accepts the deal, but when he remembers his sister, he realizes the mistake he's making and goes back on his decision. But it's too late and everyone disappears while Mike is trapped in the dream. He tries to get out, but the children start attacking him, leaving him seriously injured. Even so, his sister's name wakes him up just as an animatronic mask is about to be placed on his face. Fortunately, Mike manages to escape using the strategy of removing the screw from the handcuff. Thanks to this, he is able to push the button to get free and escapes at the last second. In the room where he was being held, he finds the destroyed bodies of Max, her brother Jeff and the henchmen. However, there is no time to lose and Mike escapes as fast as he can. When he reaches the end of the corridor, the door is locked. Foxy then appears and prepares to attack him, but the young man manages to open the door at the last moment. While all this is going on, Abby doesn't want to leave her room, even at the insistence of her aunt, who gives up and goes to watch TV in the living room. Suddenly, Freddy appears inside the house and attacks the woman. Hearing a strange noise, Abby opens the door and finds Freddy in the living room, along with the spirit of the child who controls the animatronic. He calls the girl to come with him to the pizzeria and the two take a cab. Sometime later, 
Mike wakes up at the police station, having been saved by Vanessa. He tells her that the animatronics tried to eliminate him and that they want to get Abby. Vanessa then reveals the whole truth. The reason she knows so much about the pizzeria is that the place was created by her father, William Afton. It was he who captured the children and trapped them inside the animatronics so that the police wouldn't find their tracks. In this way, he ends up trapping the children's souls in those robots and somehow manages to control them. Knowing the whole story, Mike decides to put an end to it and save his sister. Vanessa refuses to confront her father, but gives Mike shock devices, because only electricity can fight the animatronics. Arriving at the pizzeria, Mike sees his sister being taken away by the animatronics, but two of them are blocking the passage through the stage and watching anyone who tries to enter. Going through the hidden location, Mike sees two buckets of water near the stage and has an idea. He pours the water where the robots are and uses the shock device to electrocute them both. On the other side of the stage, Abby is being guided by Chica, but begins to find her attitude strange. She doesn't want to go any further, but the robot grabs her and tries to force her into one of the animatronics. Fortunately, at that moment, Mike appears and uses his taser, hitting the robot's eye, which also falls off. The young man then reunites with Abby and the two run towards the exit. However, the cake-shaped animatronic appears and attacks Mike's leg, causing him to release his shock device. While trying to get rid of the robot, Mike tells Abby to run. The girl hides, but Foxy realizes she's escaping and heads in her direction. Shortly afterwards, Mike manages to break free from the robot and kicks it away, buying him time to retrieve his weapon. The robot attacks him again, but Mike manages to electrocute it. In the main hall, the animatronic keeps looking for Abby among the arcade machines, but she manages to hide in the ball pool. Mike shows up looking for his sister, but in front of him appears another animatronic, the boss Springtrap. Without hesitating, Mike fires his taser, but it's no use and the animal strikes back, throwing him away. Meanwhile, the animatronic approaches Abby and the girl is pulled away by Vanessa, who has come to save her. Meanwhile, Springtrap continues to hit Mike, while claiming that it was he who took his little brother's life. What's more, he manages to reactivate all the fallen animatronics, who get up to obey his command. At that moment, Vanessa takes out her gun and points it at Springtrap, but the villain knows she won't shoot because he's her father, William Afton. The guy then removes his mask, revealing that he's not an animatronic, but the man who got Mike the job at the pizzeria. The villain tries to induce Vanessa to obey him, but she refuses and shoots him. The bullet doesn't hit him because of the suit's protection and the man tries to eliminate his own daughter. Even though he's wounded, Mike goes to help Vanessa and believes that the drawings on the wall could be the key to stopping the villain. So he asks Abby to draw another picture and put it up. At that moment, Vanessa manages to break free and attacks her father, but ends up being hit by him. Abby then removes the drawing of Springtrap from the wall and puts up a new one. At the same time, Mike turns off the power and turns on just one lamp, focused on his sister's drawing, which showed the rabbit not welcoming the children, but in its real monster form. The drawing has an effect on the animatronics, who finally realize who the real enemy is. The four of them get together to attack William, and they do so by throwing the little cake-shaped Dementor in his direction. The villain manages to get rid of the thing, but the attack activates the suit's mechanism, which begins to destroy it internally. William falls to the ground and is forcibly taken away by the animatronics. As the pizzeria begins to collapse, Mike and Abby help Vanessa out of there. Sometime later, Mike shows up at school and the therapist says that Abby has improved her behavior a lot in the last few days. They then drive home, but before they do, Mike stops off at the hospital to see Vanessa, who is recovering from her injuries. Back home, Abby wants to know what happened to her friends at the pizzeria. She asks if they're all right and if she can visit them sometime. Mike comforts her and only replies that there's no telling what might happen. Far away, the Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria is destroyed, but the animatronics are still active. Unbeknownst to anyone, William is inside, but he is now seriously injured and being held prisoner by his creations, so that he can pay for all his crimes. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.